right, so we are looking at section 7.3, page 202 in the student journal. We're going to be looking at rational expressions. So rational just means fraction. Whenever you see rational, we're talking about a fraction. And in this case, the numerator and the denominator are going to be non-zero polynomials. Polynomials are things like x squared plus 4, x squared minus 3. Simplified form of a rational expression. A rational expression that has no common factors other than 1 or negative 1. So let me show you what I'm talking about here. Like let's say that we have something like x plus 1 times x minus 2 over x plus 1 times x minus 5. And you're asked to simplify that. One thing that people do that's incorrect is they start multiplying this out. That's not simplifying it. That's making the problem worse because it's already factored. Do we have a common factor here? What is it? So x plus 1 could cancel out. And so this would be the simplified form. Another name for that original one is x minus 2 over x minus 5. But we also have to say that x could not equal negative 1. So here's our answer, but we would say that this is the answer to the simplified version of that original so long as x does not equal negative 1. Why do you think I'm saying x cannot equal negative 1? What would I have in the original if, I, if x did equal negative 1? Zero in the denominator, and we're not allowed to have that. See, right now, I can already see x can't be 5, so I don't have to state that. I don't have to state that x can't be 5. But I don't know that back at the beginning, x was not allowed to be negative 1. That's why I have to state that. So this would be the simplified form. All right, simplifying rational expressions. If we have a times c over b times c, those cancel, and we just get a over b. Let me show you the common mistake, though, that people do. So if I gave you 2 times 5 over 2 times 6, What's the answer to this? 10 over 12, which is what? 5 over 6. Is it okay to do that? Do I get the right answer? Yeah, it's okay. But here's what people think then. They're like, okay, well then what if I have 2 plus 5 over 2 plus 6? What's the correct answer to that? 7 over 8. Would I get the same answer if I did that? No. So if I have addition, I'm not allowed to do any canceling. The only time I'm allowed to is if I have factors. Then I can do the canceling because any number divided by itself is 1. So just be aware of that. All right, so here they're showing us that if we had this, we could cancel out that common factor of x plus 3. All right, I'd like you guys to try one now. So what if I gave you x squared minus 4 over x squared minus 3x minus 10. I want you to simplify that and tell me the restriction. You have to have factors. How does the numerator factor? You know, x squared minus 4, how does that factor? Right? Okay, what about the denominator? Carter, do you know how that would factor? I agree with the x minus 5, but it would need to be what? x plus 2. All right, so there's how it, would how it would factor. And now we have to see, are there any common factors? Well, these are common factors, so those would cancel out. So I would say that another way of writing this would just be x minus 2 over x minus 5. 
So what I would be saying is, is if I plugged in x here and I plug in x here, I should get the same answer. <coughs> However, there's one value that I could not use. And what is the one value that I could not use? Negative 2. So I would have to say x cannot equal negative 2. So that would be my answer on that. Any questions? All right, let's go over to the back here. When we're multiplying rational expressions, we can just multiply straight across. But sometimes we're better off, instead of just multiplying straight across like they did here, we could also just simplify first. I think when we have a lot of values like that, I think it, it is helpful just to multiply straight across and then go ahead and simplify. But I also could have looked at way back here, 5 divided by 10 would give me 2. x squared and x, or I could look here, this x and this x would simplify. Here I have a y squared and a y, that's y cubed, and there's a y cubed. Those two can cancel, those can all cancel. And then what I'm left with then is a 6x squared over 2 times 2, which is 4. And see how that's going to be the same thing as this. And then I have to look back at the beginning. See how there's nothing left in the denominator or as far as variables go? But back at the beginning, I can see that x is not allowed to be 0 and y is not allowed to be 0. So just another way of looking at that. So when we're multiplying, we can just multiply straight across if we want. But sometimes it's better to simplify first, whichever way you think is easier. When we're dividing, do you guys know that we just multiply by the reciprocal if we're dividing? So look what they did here. They're dividing. So the first one stays the same, but the second one becomes multiply by the reciprocal. And then just go through and do it. All right, so I'm going to give you guys a division problem. So let's say that we have this x squared minus 9 over x squared minus 16 divided by x plus 3 over x minus 4. I want you guys to try to simplify that. And then also state the restrictions. All right, Tori, talk me through this. How did you factor that? Um, it would be x plus 3 times x minus 3 over x plus 3 times x minus 4. Good. And then what did you do with this? Uh, made it over some goals. And then what happened? And then you cross out x plus 3, and then the add is minus 4. And what'd you get? Uh, x minus 3 over x plus 4. And x cannot equal 4 or negative 3. Good. There we go. How many people got that right? Okay, pretty good. Probably some people just weren't quite finished. Okay, guys, so let's try some of these now on the extra practice. So I want us to take a look at numbers 2 and 4 to start with. Okay, 
In order to factor, the first thing we should always look for is a GCF, greatest common factor. Ethan, can you think of what these two can each be divided by, what the GCF would be? Uh, X. Yep. And? Uh, y squared. Good. So that's what I need to factor out. So if I do 5XY cubed divided by XY squared, I would still have the 5, the X's would cancel, and I'd still have the Y. Minus. Now we go to this one. If I have 2x squared divided by xy squared, I'm going to just have what, everyone? 2x, good. And then in the denominator, I've just got this. And so now I look and I see what can cancel. y squareds cancel. This is x. This is x times x. So I would just have an x. So this would be 5y minus 2x over x. And what would I have to state? Look back at the beginning. Well, I don't have to say x, though, because I can see that x can't be 0. What is it I can't see, though, from the beginning? y can't be 0. So I need to state that. So I already know that x can't be 0 because I'm looking right here, and I can say, oh, yeah, I can't plug in 0 for x. But I would not know that I'm not allowed to, to plug in 0 for y. Because back here, if I plugged in 0 for y, I would have gotten actually 0 minus 0 over 0. 0 over 0, that doesn't mean anything. Okay. All right, so number 4 now. Nick, what can we factor out of the numerator? Yeah, we can. We can factor out a GCF. What can both of those be divided by? X squared. X squared. And what are you left with? X plus 3. Right. Okay, what about the denominator? Jack, how does the denominator factor? Ask yourself this. What are numbers that multiply to be 24 and subtract to be 5? 8 and 3. So it's going to have to be an 8 and a 3. And then you have to decide on the signs to get a negative 5. So which one would need to be negative? There you go. Okay, so we've got that. So now these would cancel out. And so I'm going to have x squared over x minus 8. And what is the restriction? Julia, what's the restriction? Um, X can't be three. Negative, three. Negative three, good. All right, very nice. Okay, let's come down here now. I would like us to take a look at, let's, let's do just numbers nine and 10. I think that'll be good, nine and 10. All right, number nine is multiplication. Now, do I just want to start multiplying this all together? No, that's a very bad idea because the problem is going to get much worse. So if I'm multiplying, I want to think, think of factoring. Um, so how would this factor right here? Kaylee, how would I factor this? Good. And then there's nothing I can do to that. And then I look to see, do I need to flip it? And I don't. Now, I'm trying to factor this, and this is a cube. Does anybody remember the formula for factoring cubes? Yep, it's on that pink poster over there. Here's how cubes go, guys. I'm just going to write it up here. A cubed plus B cubed goes down to this. It's a plus b, and then it's a squared minus ab, and then it's plus b squared. That's how it goes if I have a cubed plus b cubed. If I have a cubed minus b cubed, then it's going to go a minus b, and it's going to go a squared plus ab, but this one... The last one just stays a plus. Okay? So that's something you're going to have to know. 
So based off of that, I want you now to factor x cubed plus 8. Zachary, do you know how it would go? X minus two. Well, good how it goes. If that's a plus, that's a plus. So X plus two. Right? And then what? Where minus two X plus one. Great. Okay, so that's how that's gonna factor. Here's the nice thing too, guys. When you factor this, as long as you've looked for a GCF this will never be able to be factored further. So right here, this will not be able to factor out further unless I forgot to look for a GCF. Well, there's no GCF, so this cannot factor further. A lot of times people waste time trying to factor that further. All right, what about this one? What can I factor out, everybody? X, and I would have this. But what happens to this now? That factors down into x plus 2, x minus 2. So that's d done. I replaced it with this. All right, so now I have to see what can simplify. Those would cancel. What else? Those and those. All right, so then what I'm left with then is x squared minus 2x plus 4 over x plus 7. What is x not allowed to equal? Look back here, guys. What did I simplify out? What, would I, what did I get rid of in the denominator? 2, negative 2, and, well, but what would make that be 0? And 0, right? So that's going to be our solution there. All right, last one. I'll do this one with you. So I'm dividing. What am I going to be doing with this one then? Flip it over, right? Because we multiply by the reciprocal, so let's factor as we go. All right, what about this one? Tom, how does x squared plus 2x minus 15 factor? Uh, x minus 5 and x plus 3. Close, so it'd be x plus 5 and x minus 3. And the reason for that is because I have to get a positive 2x, so I want for this to be positive so I can get the positive 2. Okay. Ronnie, do you know numbers that multiply to be 40 and subtract to be 3? Yep, so I'm going to use an 8 and a 5. I'll figure out the signs here in a minute. Do you know the signs? All right. Okay, now I have division, so I'm going to change it to multiplication. So this is now going to go on the top. So I'm going to go ahead and factor... And that's going to go on the top. Zach, do you know numbers that multiply to be 72 and subtract to be 1? What are numbers that multiply to be 72? 9 and 8. Don't those subtract to be 1? Okay, what about your signs then? Good. Okay, now this is going to go in the denominator. So x and x. All right, and what about this? Jesse, what are numbers that multiply to be 9? Okay, and they have to subtract to be 8. Right, and which one do you want to be positive or negative? Good. All right, so now we've got everything factored correctly. All we have to do is say anything divided by itself is 1. So there's going to be a 1. There's going to be a 1. Anything else? Yep, those. That's going to be a 1. And so now we've got x minus 3 over x minus 1 is our solution. However, what's x not allowed to be equal to? McKenna, tell me something that's not allowed to be equal to. Okay. Another one? Go ahead, McKenna. You can do them all. Good. All right. So that would be our restrictions.
Okay, questions? It's not too bad, right? So we always factor first and then we go ahead and simplify.